I am a high school teacher and I have been following all the conflicting information about schools in the media. Parliament originally stated that they were to sit in August, but this has now been brought forward to mid-May. Part of the reason for this was due to issues surrounding social distancing, but ScoMo has said all along that schools are a safe place to be. What makes parliamentarians more important than me? They can social distance more easily than I can, and they probably will, but in schools this is certainly not the case. When Mr Morrison came out last week and essentially berated and devalued teachers, this was a slap in the face to all teachers. Why is Mr Morrison putting teachers, one of the country's most important resources, in harm's way? Why are we so expendable? All right, well, I'm going to put this question to the Federal Education Minister, Dan Tian, who joins us now from his office uh, in his electorate of Hamilton in Victoria. And I should note you are live. The backdrop, though, uh, in your office is not. How do you respond to that question from Carla Owen? Uh, can I say to you, Carla, um, the Federal Government and all State and Territory Governments have been very conscious about the health and welfare of teachers and principals and teachers' aides right across this nation. Uh, both my sisters are, are teachers, so this is something that we have paid attention to and given great consideration to. But what we've done consistently right throughout this pandemic has taken the advice of the medical expert panel. Now, that medical expert panel is made up of the chief medical officers from all state and territories and the Commonwealth Chief Medical Officer. And that advice has been consistent right throughout this pandemic, that it's been safe for students to go to school and with the right protocols in place, it can, it's safe for teachers to go to school and, and teach students. And that's why it's been the consistent approach that the federal government has taken right throughout this pandemic and it will continue to be. And if that advice changes, we'll change our position. But while that advice remains the same, but then we want respect, to do everything we respect, can Minister, to the, encourage... The Prime Minister, though, has been appealing directly to teachers, saying to them on the 15th of April, these children need you for our schools to remain open. But you know very well it's not the individual teacher's decision about whether to open the school, it's the State Premier or the Territory Chief Minister. This has caused immense frustration and confusion. Well, Hamish, in the Northern Territory, the teachers have been going to school right up till the end of Term 1 and they've started again um, this term as well. In South Australia, schools open there again but, today. But Carla Rowan, with respect, in is, in, is in Melbourne teaching. in Victoria, your home state, where there is different guidance from the state government uh, and it's created an enormous amount of dismay from what we can tell from all of the teachers that have written to us because on the one hand the Prime Minister is saying one thing, you're saying the same thing and then their state government is saying another thing altogether. Well, what we've been doing right through this pandemic is taking a very consistent approach and that's following the advice of the medical experts. And when the Prime Minister was talking, he was speaking to teachers right across the nation and he was praising those teachers who are teaching our children. Some are doing it online, others are doing it in the classroom. And that's, he was reaching out to them directly and thanking them for the role they're playing and also expressing his view that they're going to play still an important role as we continue to deal with this pandemic, that we're going to need them to be providing that continuity of education. And that's what we're asking all teachers right across the country to do. And we understand that teachers are playing different roles depending on state and territory government policies. But what we wanted to do and what the Prime Minister was very keen to do was to reach out to all teachers to say thank you and just show that he understood the important role that they're playing. The next day, though, the Prime Minister, on the 16th of April, came out and said that parents should follow the instructions of the state premiers and their state education ministers, that if you lived in Victoria, there's only one person to listen to, that's the Premier of Victoria. But then subsequent to that, You've been out in public as recently as last night urging all schools to be open. Peter Dutton has been saying that any state that's not... or that Queensland, because they're not uh, putting their schools back uh, in, in place right now, that they're uh, under, the, under the pressure of the unions. Do you recognise that that creates inconsistency in the message? 
Well, what we've been saying is that we think that every state and territory should aim to set a goal, and that goal should be to have all students back in the classroom with teachers teaching in the classroom uh, by the end of May. And we think that that would be a terrific national goal for us to be able to achieve. If we've been able to flatten the curve, plus keep that continuity of education going, we think as a nation we will have achieved something that very few other countries have been able to achieve. And the reason why we're putting that case is because we know that if we don't have schools open, children in the schools, teachers teaching in the classroom, the parents, some parents will have to make the choice between going to work or staying and supervising their children while they're learning and also that those children from low socioeconomic backgrounds, from Indigenous backgrounds, from rural and remote backgrounds, those students where English is a second language in the home, they're the ones who will miss sure. out the most from uh, not being and we have at school, not having that connection with school. We have explored that issue on this program tonight, but last week Peter Dutton tweeted saying that Queensland kids should be back at school and the only reason they're not is because the Premier is running scared of the militant QTU. That is simply not true, is it? Well, um, Peter Dutton is very passionate about wanting to get children back into the into He might the be classroom. passionate, but that, that's and just not, not, doing... not true, is it? Well, that's the, a view that he, he has put now, obviously... The Queensland Education Minister has put a, put a different view. It's a democracy. They both live in Queensland. They're passionate about the education system there and they're able to have a discussion like that, as we should. That's what political debates are all about. But what so, we so have So it's been an opinion, saying, it's not a fact. Is that, is that what you're saying? It's an opinion, not a fact. Well, it, what, what we're seeing is that they're having a debate about what they think are the reasons why we aren't seeing uh, children and teachers back in the classroom at Queensland at this stage. Now, there'll be various views and they're happy to have that discussion and that debate, and as they should, both passionate Queenslanders.